This week on Paddle Tales, we're exploring the Thousand Islands in southeastern Ontario. The Thousand Islands is an incredible mix of wilderness and cottage life, beautiful blue waters, some amazing shipwrecks, even some legendary beaches. But one of the other cool things about the Thousand Islands is it's one of the world's top paddling destinations because all the little islands provide shelter from wind and waves, allowing paddlers of almost any skill level to enjoy the place. But before we dive into it, please subscribe to Paddle TV if you haven't already because we have lots more Paddle Tales episodes, paddling tips, guides, and other great videos coming your way. Paddle Tales is produced with support from NRS, Aquabound, Track Kayaks, Ontario Creates, and Bell Fund. Straddling the border of Canada and the United States along the St. Lawrence River, the Thousand Islands area is a hub for outdoor lifestyles and outdoor activities. On the banks of the river, in the beautiful small town of Gananoque, you'll find Thousand Islands Kayaking, the premier kayak outfitter in the region, dedicated to helping people experience the beauty and history of the waterway. That's where I've met up with Scott Ewart, the owner of Thousand Islands Kayaking and a kindred spirit who shares the same love for exploring by paddle that I do. We're getting an early start as it's expected to be an intense day of heat and sun. The plan is to explore some of the island's highlights, finishing with a cool down at one of the popular beaches. Paddling the Thousand Islands, such a beautiful place to get out on the river. We're not too far from Toronto, Ottawa and Montreal. Easy to get out there for a day. Gorgeous islands to go and visit. You can stop on the National Park Islands. There's washrooms, hiking trails, uh, picnic shelters, pack a beautiful picnic lunch with you. With kayaking, we can outfit you with rental packages, either for the full day or the half day or multi-day. We also have water taxi service, so if you want any camping equipment dropped off on the National Park Islands, we can simply shuttle that over to the island in our powerboat so that you can use your kayak just to explore the islands, you know, and hang out and just relax. So, okay, so Thousand Islands. Is there actually a thousand islands, or is that one of those? Is it one of those places where they are like, there's like thousands of islands here? What's your guess? There's thousands of islands. Are there here. thousands? Yeah. No. <laughs> there's one thousand eight hundred and sixty-four. Really? So there's more than a thousand islands. And wow. To be an island, it has to be ten square feet uh, above water, three hundred and sixty-five days a year, and two pieces of wooded vegetation. Okay. So if it's just grass or sedges yeah. or kind of like low laying shrubs, they consider it a shoal. So there's 1,864 identifiable islands. There's three times as many shoals. That's unbelievable. Yep. I mean, that's really, that is a paddling paradise. <laughs> and so where are we off to right now? Right now we're on our way to uh, just check out a shipwreck. Okay. It was designed to come into the shallow water ports along Gananoque, Mallory Town, and uh, they did coal mainly, as well as cattle and grain, uh, and they were able to pull into the shallow water ports. Yeah, okay. You know, I've always said that waterfalls and sunsets, you can see them a thousand times and they're always cool. I'm going to add shipwrecks to that list. So this one caught fire in 1920. They actually lit it on fire and purpose on New Year's Eve. Really? After it uh, was decommissioned, they used it as a speakeasy. Uh, so they were selling illegal alcohol uh, oh, during yeah. the Prohibition era and would literally party on the boat. A party barge. Yeah. They brought it in here into the shallow water to work on the boat and then turned it into a, a party barge <laughs> and uh, lit it on fire in 1920 uh, to get rid of it. So 
That's incredible. I mean, it's so close to the surface. You kind of expect any dive gear to see a, a shipwreck well, but it's right here. It's right there. There's the ribs. Yeah. That is cool. This is one of the shallowest ones we can see, but there's over 3,000 shipwrecks up here in the Thousand Islands. God, the Thousand Islands for many reasons. Thousands of everything. <laughs> <laughs> Let's keep her moving. Sounds good. We have a beach that we have a date with. We do indeed. I'm looking forward to a swim. No skinny dipping, eh? <laughs> really? <laughs> no. One of the things I've always loved doing is teaching people to paddle, just getting them out on the water and inspiring people to paddle and get outside. And I think that's one of the biggest reasons that Scott and I get along so well is because we share that passion, not only for paddling, but for sharing the experience and getting people on the water. Paddling is just a, such an amazing way to connect with the landscape. I got into it when I was very young because of that connection with the water, because of the ecology, being able to share moments with your family and your friends when you head out on the river and just have a unique opportunity for an experience. The common perception is that whitewater paddlers do what they do simply to push their limits, test themselves and get a little scare, get a good adrenaline rush. And of course, that is a real part of it. But so much of whitewater kayaking is exploring. And it's that same reason that I find sea kayaking, kayak touring so enjoyable. It's not knowing what's around the next corner. Even if a thousand other people have gone around that corner ahead of you, you haven't. You don't know what's around that corner. And each corner is a discovery. Sure. All right, here Sweet. You go. You Thank you. Yes, right, indeed. Well, you got a couple of breads, some cheese, meat, local fresh fruit and veg. Yo. Yeah. Perfect for paddling. There I mean, we is. earned this. We must have paddled, what, 18 miles already hundreds, today? Hundreds. <laughs> Everything's in thousands in Thousand <laughs> Islands. Yeah. So thousands of meters. Yeah. That's how we should just put it. While most of the islands in the area are privately owned, about 20 of the islands are part of the Thousand Islands National Park, which provides travelers with a great opportunity to hop out and stretch. A number of the islands even provide picnic and camping facilities. But I think the coolest thing about paddling around the Thousand Islands is how, at times, it feels like you're on a wilderness adventure. And then you turn the corner and discover island homes and boats in all directions. And the busyness of the area isn't something new. It's been a high traffic riverway for centuries, which is why it's not hard to find historical landmarks throughout the area. All right, Ken, so we're just coming into one of the more famous stops out here in the Thousand Islands. This is Half Moon Bay. Half Moon Bay. So turn the corner here, you can see it has that beautiful half crescent moon kind of shape to it. Yeah. And so this is an outdoor cathedral. Oh, Highest yeah. cathedral ceiling in the world. Every Sunday you get to come out here and <laughs> land on the rocks and people can enjoy the uh, church service. Highest ceiling in, in the world. I like cathedral it. Cathedral ceiling in the world. <laughs> yeah. And uh, the cool bowl formation that you can see on the cliffs right here was carved out by the last glacier about 12,000 years ago. So this was a giant whirlpool that created these cliff faces. And on top, there's a bunch of holes that were drilled down into the top of uh, the granite. Yeah. Um, so the First Nations were able to use those for food storage. So any of the wow. hunting and fishing that they would do, they'd usually smoke the meats, uh, mix it with berries and uh, have uh, the thermal mass of the granite to be able to store and preserve it for their winter meats. Wow, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, all right, well, we're headed way over to uh, Thwartway Island, another national park island. Find some sandy beaches. All right. Take another break. I shall follow. All right. Hey guys. Hello. What a day. You know, whether it's a backpacking trip, biking trip, paddling trip, whatever type of trip you're going on, you know, for me, I usually go with a mission. But the real adventure is the journey. And the journey 
doesn't have to follow any set path, and that's the joy of adventures, and that's adventure travel. Stop, explore, and sometimes you may not even realize your end goal, but you've discovered a whole new world, a whole new experience along the way, and, uh, and that's how magical things happen. Et voila! Nice! We are here. We are here. Let's get out on this nice oh. sandy beach. I've never really thought much about living on an island. Although I'm a small oh. town kind of guy, nice. islands have always seemed a little isolating for my liking. But I'll tell you what, after this day of exploring the Thousand Islands, I can totally understand the appeal. Rather than isolating people, the islands have brought together people who share the same love of the water to coexist within one of the most beautiful coastal wilderness areas that you'll find anywhere. I have to admit that it's even got me thinking that maybe there's an island here with my name on it. But until that time, I'm gonna continue to enjoy exploring the countless nooks, channels, and hidden gems that the islands offer. Okay.